Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 11 part of this playlist that I'm calling Factor Analysis. And let's jump to today's topic, which is maximum likelihood estimation of the model parameters. And here we assume the, the observations Y1 through Yn constitute a random sample from a multivariate normal distribution with mean vector mu and covariance matrix sigma. Then the model parameters lambda and psi can be estimated by the methods of maximum likelihood. Now it can be shown that the estimates must satisfy these equations. So when you put in the likelihood of y, the normal distribution, you take partials with respect to lambda and psi, then you get these equations. Now this last equation kind of helps it, uh, the parameter, or the uh, lambda parameters be unique when you assume that this must be a diagonal matrix. Now the equations must be solved iteratively and in practice the procedure may fail to converge. Now in R, this is the only option you have with the default function in R called factor now, which stands for factor analysis. It only uses um, maximum likelihood estimation. So a quick example using the R function Let's say we have 30 brands of Japanese wine, and this was studied in 1963, and they were looking at the relationship between taste, odor, and these other variables, you know, pH, acidity, one and two, the sake meter, the different types of sugars and alcohols. But here we're gonna see if we can model the uh, correlation matrix with factor analysis. So we read the data in, and we, you know, name the columns, and this is it. This is the function factor now. We put in our data frame and then how many factors we want and it produces it. And I call it, uh, I store it to a variable fact one, factor analysis model one. And these are the results. And, and these are actually the same results that we get in the previous methods of solving this. And I, we use the principal components method for solving factor analysis. We get a uniqueness sometimes called a specific variance, and it's the error terms you, um, specific to the variables that we're uh, considering. The loadings for each factor, and here we assumed a four-factor model, so there's loadings associated with each of those factors. Now notice that R leaves blank any loading that's less than 0.1 produces the sums of squares associated with each factor. And so you can see that, you know, 27% of the variability is accounted for by factor one, 21% for factor two, 14% factor three, and about 14% for factor four. Now, one of the benefits of maximum likelihood estimation is we get a test. So to test that the hypothesis of the four-factor model is sufficient, we just look at the results. So it tells us the chi-square statistic and the degrees of freedom and the p-value is 0.4. So the null hypothesis is the four-factor model is sufficient and the alternative is that it is not sufficient. And here, since we do not reject, we assume that the four-factor model is sufficient. You can also calculate the communalities which are the variances associated with each variable. So 99% of the variable in taste is accounted for by these four factors. 39% for odor, and that's actually not very uh, big, but it, you, then you can look at it for each variable. Now, one question that we have to ask is, how many factors do we use? And that's the, generically we call that M. M is the number of factors we use, and it's often, undetermined but going into a factor analysis and so there there's will be four different approaches on how to find m the number of factors to use in that model one is choose m to equal the number of factors needed to achieve a certain percentage of the total variance of s or r um, and in this example four seems reasonable we use the four factor model in the example but if we look at the cumulative of the total variance or the variance accounted for by factors. It's one, two, three, four. And after four um, 
we get an 80 it, it accounts for 84 percent of the total variance so that's and so that's why we uh, use four now we could also you choose m to equal the number of eigenvalues greater than the mean eigenvalue and again it, it four seems reasonable using this approach but if we look at the eigenvalues associated with the correlation matrix find the mean or the average is one so then we just print out the eigenvalues and count how many are greater than the mean. And it's one, two, three, four are greater than the mean value of the, you know, the mean eigenvalue. And so four seems appropriate again. And if we look at a screed plot of the eigenvalues of S or R, the, the covariance matrix or correlation matrix, look at the sharp drop in the graph. And that really shouldn't say the trace. We're just looking at the eigenvalues of S or the eigenvalues of R. And so I'll fix that in the hard copy. But let's, we just plot the eigenvalues. And this is what we get. Let me decrease the screen a little bit. And this is it. Now, scree actually, I think, is a geological term that means the this, this crud at the bottom of a cliff. And so if this is a cliff and this is the, the crud that we don't want, and so it's one, two, three, four. And again, the scree plot indicates that we should have a four factor model. Now, when using the in the fourth approach in finding the number of factors in a, in a factor model, factor analysis model, is we use the MLE and do a test. You know, we calculate the MLE. And so the no hypothesis is that the model is appropriate and so in this case well in the i'm going to do one with four but in the example above we used in the example above we used four and the p-value was big so we did not reject so the evidence says the four factor model is fine but in this example i'm going to use the same data but just two factors and so it it prints it out the uniqueness and there's the loadings for both factors and the cumulative uh, proportion of the variance. But look at the test. The test statistic, you know, is, is the two-factor model sufficient? And the p-value is, is really close to zero. So that's evidence that the alternative is true. And that was that the two-factor model was not sufficient. And so there's evidence that we, sh that we shouldn't use a two-factor model. But then, of course, we have to keep uh, investigating how many factors we want, but based on the other three criteria, four was was the an appropriate number. Okay, so the next video will be on factor rotation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.